Now, what about the maintenance of the parents? The vast majority of scholars say that it's an obligation upon the children collectively, not upon one child, which is unfortunately, oops, microphone is gone, which is unfortunately, I get a lot of questions about. People saying to me that our parents are old and needy and we are seven siblings. One of us is working in the Gulf and he's the one who's providing for my parents, paying money for the house, for the maid, and the other six are passive. I say this is haram. This is a collective effort. The other six should also contribute financially. It should be divided upon them as when dividing the inheritance, some scholars say. So the man pays double what his sister does according to the inheritance. And some say, no, they have to be equal. And the most authentic opinion is that one has to pay according to his own ability. So a rich boy pays according to his wealth and someone who's barely earning pays according to his earning and wealth. Now, some scholars say that even if the parents are not needy, it's an obligation upon the children to provide for their parents. And this is not true. If the parents are well off and they have enough money or more than enough to give them an honorable and decent life, and they're strong, they don't need a mate, they're healthy. Yet they insist that their children send them $500 a month each from their earnings. Well, if the children are wealthy and such an amount would not burden them or uh, cause them any hardship, I would definitely say do it for the sake of Allah to please your parents and you're rewarded for that. But if it is not, if the children do need the money and they don't have much to spare because they have children, they have a wife, they need to take care of their families, they need to save. In this case, they're not obliged to provide for their parents. And a lot of the Muslims misunderstand the hadith, Anta wa ma luka li abik. When a man came to the Prophet Islam said, and my father wants to take uh, money from me against my will. So the father, the, the Prophet said, Islam, Anta wa ma luka li abik. You and your wealth belong to your father. Some of the scholars misunderstood this hadith and thought that it means that it gives a carte blanche to the father to take whatever wealth from his son's earning and savings. And this is not true. The vast majority of scholars say that he cannot harm his son. So if I have savings of 100,000 and my father comes and wants to take half of that, this would jeopardize my savings, my plans to buy a property or a plot to invest, etc. And this is a lot of money. Yes, if my father is really needy and he wants something to get even with, just tell to make the month for he comes and asks for 5,000. I'm obliged to give him. So what is your answer, Sheikh, for you and your father belong to you and your wealth belong to your father. The hadith is referring not to my wealth. Because if I and my wealth belong to my father to access and to do whatever he wants with my wealth, this means that the moment I die, he should take everything, which is not true. The wife gets one eighth, the children gets this this much after I get as a father, one, one sixth 
or one third depending. So I don't get everything, which means that in life, I don't even get everything. So the hadith is to be understood that one has to go out of his way to please his father when his father is in real need. Not when my father is a multimillionaire and he comes and sees one of my cars or one of my properties and he wants to confiscate it. He says, I need it. No, this is unfair and it's not part of uh, Islam.